I do have a signal here on the RV. So first here, I'm going to change around my screen so I have everything I need to see. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on this EGM channel. Put on a bipolar channel. And then I'll leave my markers on full. My bottom EGM, I will make that an RV bipolar. And for this one here, I will make it a unipolar tip once it's in the can or once it's in the pocket. But right now it's not. So I'm going to make it another bipolar vector as well. So distal tip to M2 will be a bipolar effectively. Once it's inside the body, I'm able to do that. You can see right here, it's failing the morphology. This is because this is a reprocessed device and this is the old patient's morphology. So it just doesn't match the score, which is why it's giving a failure here. We can see RV activation before LV activation on my EGM channel. That's just because this patient has a left bundle branch block. So these are my first observations I'm seeing. I'm seeing signals on the RA. I'm seeing signals on the RV and I'm seeing signals on the LV. So first off, I'm just going to go ahead and check the leads themselves. Okay, I'm just making sure my mic's working. I'm gonna go VVI 40, it's already programmed that way so I don't have to actually change the rate. If for example, this patient's rate was slower than this was programmed, I'd have to make a temporary programming change to allow the intrinsic to come across, but it's not. So I'm gonna select the ones that I want except for the high voltage and hit update selected. The reason I'm not doing the high voltage is because that's actually a uh, unipolar vector. It goes from the coil, from the RV coil to the can. Since the device is not yet in the pocket, it won't be a within range impedance. So up here, we're seeing that we're getting our initial sensing, 10, uh, 10 10.6 millivolts. You wanna go ahead and monitor this. When these numbers pop up, it's only pulling one number. So if this was happened to be like a PVC and it said 10, but everything else is very short, then you would worry that you're not getting good sensing. In this case, everything is good. It looks, looks quality, so I don't have to worry about pulling secondary numbers. So we have sensing of 2.4 in the RA, sensing 2.6 in the RV, sorry, 10.6 in the RV. Device is off, yeah. No surprises there. Impedances look good. We're going to come on. I'm going to do VVI 90 here. And I'm gonna go, right now it's to coil, which is fine for that vector. I'm just gonna get an initial threshold. We knew that the old threshold was closer to two. Um, so under two, so we'll go ahead and start there. VVI 90, two volts, and then we're gonna watch up here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and hold the test. The middle one, the middle one. It's pacing here. We can see that the LV activation is before the RV activation. We're driving the rate. And we're waiting till we see loss of capture. So we lose capture there. And it's going to pull up our numbers here. So we see we have an LV pace. We see it conducts the RV. And then right here, we pace again. There's no evoked response on the near fields. There's no evoked response on the RV as well. Usually I like to have a far field vector to confirm, but this is pretty clear loss of capture on the near, near field vector. So I know this is loss of capture, 0.5. Fantastic threshold at the tip. The one problem is because that is the tip, that's very close to the, um, to the apex, which is not necessarily ideal. I'm gonna rerun this test. I'm gonna do it as a decrement test, two cycles per step, VVI. 88 is a little fast, so we're going to go ahead and our, our heart rate's going 88, so we're going to go about 100 to overdrive pace it. I'm going to start off at a lower output just because I know where it's at and the patient's not dependent. If they are dependent, you're going to start at a higher output. Hold the capture here. Driving the rate again. And we're looking for loss of capture. We're getting some competition with the Bovi. As you can see, the device thinks that that is a fib but it wasn't. And then here we have clear loss of capture, right? So we went ahead and stayed on the device inhibited during that time. Once they stopped Bovi, I was able to go ahead and continue the test. It's going to pop up here shortly. We see that we're, looks like we're capturing here and we can always reconfirm this test with a far field. And then with these later tests, you have a pace, you have no evoked response on the near field channel. You have nothing on the LV channel. This indicates loss of capture here. 
this old threshold that was in the uh, other patient. So when it says this date, just remember three process devices, you can't necessarily trust that information. And finally, we're gonna run the RA capture test once they're done with all this. So we know their rate is going to run 80, so we wanna go at least 90 to 100. We know they have good conduction. So a couple things we're looking at is we're looking for an evoked response on the atrial channel, and we're looking for the associated RV conduction to follow. Coming on pacing here. So we're seeing this conduction to follow. Keep going here, and we'll take a look. The device is taking a little bit longer. It's probably a little confused by all that bovie that's going on. And we're gonna just take a look here and see what happens. So you see an atrial pace. You see it conduct to the RV. You can actually see far R on this channel, but the device didn't oversense it because it has a blanking period. This thick line on the top right here is the blanking period for the atrium. It ignored it. A pace, V sense, A pace, V sense, A pace, no associated V sense. Morphologically, you can also see that it's quite different. These are wider when you capture. This is a little bit thinner, morphology. That doesn't always, thinner doesn't necessarily mean that you lost capture, but in this case, we know that it didn't conduct. The morphology looks different. Everything points to atrial loss of capture. So our thresholds here look fantastic. The reason why they're not appearing is because the device is currently programmed to be pacing off. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna turn it to DDD as my first programming change. It's gonna to default to all of these things. And some of these things were from the old patient, right? So it's not necessarily valid. We're gonna to have to come back and change all of these. The one thing you wanna confirm is that your, your tacky is still disabled because we don't want any unexpected shocks for our physicians here. Okay. So we now have pacing on and you go to your fast path. You now have your thresholds we ran. Those numbers look great but obviously we need to optimize. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and run our automated tests. Are we done with Bovi, you think, or is this still gonna be some more? Still gone? Okay. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna to wait to turn on our autos until they finish, and we're gonna move ourselves. Oh, watch your knees there. We're gonna go ahead and move over to our um, <clears throat> tests our test button here, go to CRT toolkit, and we're gonna perform auto vex select. So they are doing a little bit of bovi, so it could be complicated here, but we'll go ahead and try it. We're gonna change, we're gonna click additional parameters, change it to RV pace. Sorry? Okay, I'll, I'll correct it here in a minute, sorry. Yeah. We're gonna set RV pace, and we're gonna go ahead and collect our measurements here. What it's going to do is it's going to pace on the RV and sense on the LV. And what we're trying to determine here is the delayed activation between the LV and the RV. And that's what we're trying to correct. So we're looking for the site of latest activation following an RV pace. So it's coming up with our numbers here. So P4 is earlier. P4, if you remember, this lead is not actually placed here. This is just a diagram. It's actually more here in a uh, posterior lateral uh, with distal tip being a little bit more apical and four being more uh, medial here. So the side of latest activations are actually two and one are our best options. So we can kind of go off of that plus in the anatomic, what? Oh, plus the anatomic positioning. Obviously, you know, apical pacing is associated with worse outcomes. So we have to say D1, even though it has a late activation, may not be the best thing for this specific patient. All right. So now we know that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try getting a threshold at two. So I went back to my test screen. Let me go back for you. Tests, capture and sense, or you can go fast path straight to here to capture and sense. VVI, go at 100, additional parameters, change the vector to two to coil. Go back here, VVI 100. We knew our threshold was around two, two and a half. Actually, it's around one and a half. So we're gonna hit this button here. And we're getting some bovi, so I'm just gonna stay on pacing. We're capturing here. We see LV before RV activation, right? A little PVC, but I'm gonna stay on. Keep going here. Keep going. And 
you always want to have a far field or some sort of um, surface EKG available uh, if possible, especially in dependent patients, because if you don't have that, you may be tricked to think you're capturing. This patient is not dependent, so I feel confident using my bipolar vectors right now. So we see our LV pace, our RV activation, here, this pattern, this is a little different. That could be some degree of fusion or something, but we're definitely losing capture here. The morphology is completely different. There's no LV activation. So fairly confident that's loss of capture at uh, two to coil. So two to coil is a viable vector. We come back to our CRT toolkit. We can go ahead and perform our quick optimization. We may have to run it a couple times just in case their bogey gets in the way, but we'll know in a second. So what this does is just gives us measurements, but we're going to go ahead and skip this A-sense mode. And this is just trying to give us a recommendation on our LV-RV offset, so the delay between the LV and the RV, and what kind of activation we expect here. So its recommendation uh, didn't come across for that. So we're going to ignore these two because we're using other algorithms in the meantime. Um, and we're just going to ignore our CRT offset for now. We'll approach that later. But we will go ahead and turn on Sync AV. What Sync AV is an automated algorithm? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm still, still changing things. So one of the things they're pointing out right now is we're having diaphragmatic stem. The reason being that lead is uh, setting, here we're gonna go ahead and break some performance. Um, the reason being that lead is sitting kind of lateral. Yes, I'll get it right now, just a second. So because we're getting that diaphragmatic stem, we're going to change it to art of coil, hit program here. And then also we can turn down our output as well because we know our threshold is much lower than five volts. So we have that. Because they tend to have DSTEM, we probably don't want to turn on an automated algorithm because the backup pace is five volts, which could be problematic for this patient. So I'm going to point it at a fixed at two. It's already at one millisecond, but that's actually because the old patient was probably at one millisecond, which means we want to rerun our threshold again at 0.5 to see what we can do with battery life. So we're going to turn down our output to 0.5 milliseconds and run it again. And we're gonna see how much the pulse width makes a difference on the longevity of the battery. Yes. Running here. And there's our loss of capture, LV, RV, nothing here. That little notch pointing to the left indicates we're pacing on the left first. BP means we're pacing left first, but we're by B pacing. VP means you're just pacing in the ventricle. The threshold is still around the same. It's one at 0.5. So I feel good with a two to one ratio for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down my pulse width to 0.5, hit program here. Once again, we have all these. The only thing we didn't decide to do is quick opt at this time. We can come back to it. And then I'm just gonna go through my normal Brady programming. So my LVRV offset, I'll go ahead and leave like this until someone can take a look at the 12 lead. If you guys can avoid, okay. we just don't want to unhook their 12 lead until we have a chance to look at the EKG. You just make sure they don't take it off yet. All right, so DDD, LV first by 15 milliseconds. Uh, some sort of multi-lead, yeah, multi-lead, whatever it is. Um, Trigger pacing, we'll leave that alone. Magnet response, leave that to normal. Noise reversion, I'll leave that as pacing uh, off because the patient's not dependent. If they were dependent, you may want to consider noise reversion to be uh, asynchronous in those cases, but we're leaving it pacing off. Episodal pacing mode, leave that VVI. We're not running any kind of sensor right now. She seems to be, or he seems to be pretty chronotropically competent, so no need to change that. Base rate at 60, max sensor rate. I mean, the man's 80 years old, right? Or how old are they? 71, they're older, so we can play with the sensor rate a little bit, but I'd say these are probably fine for now. Um, <clears throat> pace day V delay, 150, 100. Uh, we can play with that as well, but we have our um, sync AV running, so it shouldn't be any issues there. 
Next, we get our capture and sense. We make sure our outputs are good. We can go and turn on our cap confirm. And when I try to turn it on, it's gonna say, hey, maybe we should run this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it run. Actually, here's an idiosyncrasy of a previously implanted device. I just turned it on and it said, okay, I'm confident because it was already programmed for the past patient. But the problem is every patient is different. So if you use a reprocess device, always make sure to rerun cap confirm for the first time, or you end up going to use an old, um, an old template, which is not ideal. So cap confirm failed. We're going to try it again. Okay. However, Once again, I ran it here. This is my mistake. I should have forced it to conform the setup first. So I'm going to rerun it doing this setup. This is one of the idiosyncrasies of using a reprocess device is you're going to be using old patient templates. Even though it did work in this case, I recommend rerunning it entirely. So you're going to check that box and then rerun it. This completely clears the old template. It's going to do a RV pace with a backup RV pace. It'll fail. We're going to try it again. <laughs> And if it continues to fail, we'll go ahead and leave it off for now. But what it does is it's trying to confirm what RV capture looks like versus non-capture. So it paces sub-threshold and it paces at threshold with a backup pace of five volts to determine what looks like capture. In this case, it says, I don't feel confident in that. So we're gonna go ahead and program it off for now. And we're going to set it at a fixed at two and a half volts, which will give us a decent enough margin. I'll go ahead and leave this at two and I'll leave this at two for now. Um, you can, especially for dependent patients, have higher outputs here, but because this patient's not dependent, we're gonna check them in the morning. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this for now, uh, just because I don't want them to be lost to follow up. Things to consider for battery longevity, we're going M2 to coil here, RV coil. If you look at our impedance here, it's only 440. Lower impedance means a higher current drain. So you can try other vectors as well. We can, for example, run this at M2, to P4 or M2 to M3. We'll try M3 first, and I'm just gonna run it VVI 90. I'm gonna start at two and a half. Sorry, I'm gonna run it 100. Start at two and a half and see if we capture or not. We are capturing here. 1.7, 1.5. The D stem has calmed down, correct? Yeah, there's no diaphragmatic. No diaphragmatic. So in this case, the threshold is 1.5. It's kind of debatable what's gonna have a bigger impact on battery longevity, right? Because at 1.5, we're going to have to increase our output to two and a half at 0.5, or we can keep it at two at 0.5 at uh, the coil vector. So what I would recommend is assessing it, the current drain in these cases. Um, currently our battery current drain is 13 micro ampere hours at our output at two at 0.5 at the RV coil, M2 to coil. Instead, I'm going to go M2 to M3. I'm going to increase this to two and a half, and I'm gonna hit program here. And now we're gonna take a look at our current drain. And our current drain is still at 13. So this is something we can assess tomorrow. It's pretty much the same. Anytime you're going above two and a half volts in an Abbott device, it has a massive impact on current drain. So changing these things could be very uh, negative uh, in those cases. One added benefit of using M2 to M3 versus M2 to RV coil is you're no longer dependent on the RV lead to pace. So if for some reason you have a dependent patient and the RV lead fails, you can still capture on the LV lead. If you're reliant on the RV and the RV lead fails, the entire system goes down. So things to keep in mind. Uh, as far as reforming the, the um, sorry, as, as far as reforming the capacitor, the last one was in July, 2023. So I think you could make an argument for probably running another one. It does this capacitor maintenance though, so you should be fine. All these old episodes are from the old device, so I wouldn't stress myself out about it, but if for some reason you want to see it, you can click right here. And <laughs> 
see them before. Idle curiosity. Looks like the patient had VT. This is from back in 2022. All right. We've made our way past here. We've already programmed our vectors. We'll go ahead and check on our PVARP. Just remember that if they do have retrograde, your shortest PVARP should be longer than the retrograde conduction timing. To test that, you go to tests. You can go to temporary pacing. You can go to VVI. Increase the rate to 110 in this case. We're gonna hit start and we're gonna look for one to one with the V's to A's. So is the V driving the A or are they disassociated here? So as you can see here, the atrial rate is not increased with the ventricular rate. And as a result, you're actually getting some competitive intrinsic breakthrough here. So the patient does not have retrograde conduction. If they did, you would see a V and an A every single time, but they don't. So we don't have to worry about our PVARP. PVARP at 225, we can reduce this down to 200. PVARP at 275. We can reduce this to 250, and that will hopefully give us some flexibility here. Next, we go to our mode switches. Our mode switch is DDIR. I like to just do VVIR. Um, there are some idiosyncrasies with the device and long AV delays. VVIR doesn't uh, allow that to happen. In this case, we have short AV delays, so it's not really much of an issue, but Sometimes it's just easier. 70 for the base rate, 170 for the ATDR, the anti tachycardial detection rate. That just means that's how fast it is before it detects it. We're going to go to our tachytherapy here. We'll do a three zone. And I would go ahead and consult your. Uh, HRS guidelines on this. We can do either made at RIT or we can do like a three zone with a 171 monitor, 187 active. I'm gonna go ahead and program it like this and then we'll just ask the physicians what they'd like. Next, we're gonna to go to intervals to detect, 30, 30, 30. You can go ahead and reduce this to say 18. Keep this one at least at 30 though. SVT discriminators, we do want those on. We want dual chamber. We're gonna to go to morphology and we're gonna get a new morphology template because this old one is from the old patient, which is why it's scoring so poorly. Go to VVI, hit start temporary pacing. You're gonna go ahead and acquire a template once we're allowing them to conduct intrinsically. It's then going to take a look at the intrinsic conduction and determine what looks like a intrinsic event. From there, it's gonna go ahead and create a new template. We're seeing we're scoring here around 100, which is what we wanna see. Once the template is acquired, It'll say, no longer say temporary, or will no longer say acquiring template, it'll say temporary programming in effect, which means you can, loot, you can leave this now. Just click X. It'll end the temporary programming and it'll save your new template here. It'll show the new template right there. Any kind of advanced settings, far field MD, all that stuff. Uh, I'm just checking to make sure it's the correct one. Sometimes on these reprocessed devices, they'll have the original MD programmed on. So for a new device, I would use far field MD. Uh, just remember that this was in a previous patient and you want these to be normally programmed, not something that was set up for that old patient. SVT discriminator timeout should be um, off. SVT upper limit. Um, I would do 230 and you could even do 240. Yeah, 240 for that, 230 for your SVT upper limit. Next, we're gonna go to our therapies. Leave this as a monitor zone, ATP times three. We're gonna go max output here, 36 joules, followed by 40 joules. The reason why you can't do 40 joules in the first bout is because um, the device has to it, keep underneath the 10 second charge time. So to do that, it can only go to 36 joules. Um, it's just to make sure you deliver energy faster. When a capacitor hasn't been recently charged, it takes longer to fill up. I like to put my ATP upper cutoff rate at 285, ATP while charging, once again, max 36. And then 40, 40 after that, BT therapy timeout. Remember that stays off. Def settings, we can go through that in just a second. BT redetection, normal, nominal, those are all fine. VF assurance on, I would go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to leave a note in the device. So VF 
Therapy Assurance, I would recommend programming on after about six weeks. The reason being, it's a great algorithm, but if there is some reason the lead pulls loose, you could have a failure. On Finally, we have our tacky settings. We'll go ahead and do our deft. So to do teft, we turn on an RV coil to can vector. So we'll just turn this one off for a second. We'll do custom. Um, we'll do RV coil, sorry, RV tip to RV coil. There we go. We now have that visualized. We're gonna go to test, temporary pacing, VVI. We're gonna pace it 120. I'm gonna do some fast pacing here for a second. We're gonna do RV only, hit start. Get a couple of those, take a picture here. Change my sweep speed. Get to the trough and then measure to the top. So you're going from trough to peak, 57. That means they're a normal depolarizer. So we're gonna go back to parameters, deft. 99% of your patients are going to be a normal depolarizer. We're going to go ahead and change this to waveform, change it to pulse width. They're a normal depolarizer. We have to get a new impedance. Give me just one second. Go ahead and program this for now. Give me one second. I just need a new value here. We're going to update our value. Okay. We're going to go back to our deft programming, tacky, deft, and now the impedance is better at 55. We just didn't have a proper impedance. We're going to change it to the typical depolarizer for 57, or sorry, for 55, which will be around 4.5 for your first phase, 3.0 for the second phase. If you don't feel confident doing this, feel free to, uh, to not worry about it and uh, just use typical tilt. People, sorry, I've been using tilt their whole life, so it's okay um, to not program um, pulse width, but pulse width is really advantageous in, in some cases for patients. It's been proven to be uh, successful. Um, so you're looking at your programming here. Everything looks good. Final checks, RV coil to can for our backup. No therapy timeout, monitor only, ATP while charging normal programming here, so we're not too concerned. Once again, um, post v VF VT2 detection, you wanna make sure that's the same as VT2, not as our detection zone. VF therapy assurance is off. Post shock pacing, pause, all of that'll be the same. Uh, really quick, before we unhook EKGs, did you already unhook? Okay. Dr. Dafe, yes, did you already unhook EKGs? Sir? Did you already take the EKGs off him? Yeah, the EKG. No. Yeah. Is she not yet? Okay, I, I just want to have them take a look at his programming um, on the. So before before we take it off. Yes, all right, so we're gonna go to our episode settings, our alerts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn tacky therapy on. Is that all good? Yeah. Whenever you tacky therapy's on, always okay. confirm when you do that. That okay. way you don't shock your doctor. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my A impedance out of range, my RV impedance out of range. These have been turned off when the patient uh, had the device extracted. Um, it's LV impedance out of range settings are atypical. I don't know why they're like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and program it to the standard of 2000. But those are things to look out for, right? Old device has different programming. By V pacing alert, we don't necessarily have to worry about that, but we definitely, for warning the patient, but we wanna get it flagged for ourselves. Moving down here, um, atrial sense, less than one millivolts. Yeah, you can show that too, we don't alert the patient. Battery assurance, all of these alerts should be on. 
right? Next, we're moving to episode settings, A sense amp, V sense amp, distal tip to can. This is actually exactly how I program it. So I love this, that somebody already did that with the old patient. Atrial episode, turn it to ATAF. PMT to on, noise reversion to on, those are dead on. Off, off, PA or C response, off. These are ideal programming. You wanna have core view on just to make sure it gets turned on. And that should be pretty much all of the settings we need aside from the patient's information. So the last thing we're gonna take a look, um, because quick hop failed, we're gonna make sure what our LVRV offset should be. So um, let's ask the physicians in the booth, since they're in there to take a look at the 12 lead, or take a look at this and see what they think. Are you all right with that? Program under basic parameters, ventricular pacing, and I'm gonna do LV first by 35. Here is LV first by 35, just give sync AV a second. Sync AV on, there you go. How's that look? No worries. Elio. Elio. Please. Elio. Yes. It's turning. We want to floral. You're going to floral? Oh, this is yeah. 35. Uh, this is 35, yeah. And then I'll do simultaneous once you're ready. Let's do simultaneous. Okay. Here's LV, RV, simultaneous. Everyone got let on? No. Somebody should move this thing for us. Huh? Here it's coming, just one second. LVRV simultaneous right there. What's the last one? Simultaneous, you like it? I read it now. Let's see LV35 again. Okay, LV35. I have other options. We can do more than 35 or less too, but here's 35. Okay. Not good. Not, not good? LV first by 35, sync AV on, which is making about 198 milliseconds. So that's, that's or 98 millisecond AV delay. This is sync AV, negative 15 milliseconds, LV first by 35. This is better. This is better? Okay. Do you want me to take uh, length in the AV delay to allow some more intrinsic, you think, or no? Uh, the AV delay is dynamic at negative 15%. I'm going to change it to negative 10%. That'll make it a little bit longer. Give me one second. All right. That gave it about five different milliseconds on that. What do you think? This is nice. You like it? This last nice setting is nice. It's a okay. What's the QRS on that, if you don't mind? Perfect. RV35, sync AV on, minus 10. Um, yeah. This looks fine. And I used, uh, Q, I used two to three vector. The cytal latest activation were one and two, which one was obviously pretty apical. Two had a good threshold. So are you using four? Two. Uh, four doesn't have good numbers. So four was site of earlier activation. We can try four, but we had not a lot. We had high threshold and low and low PNS. Yeah, used to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So the final programming here, we went uh, two to three. Uh, we had a lot of diaphragmatic stimulation when we were um, implanting at uh, P4 and M3 uh, as your cathode. So as a result, we chose to use our cathode as M2, M3 as our anode. We did LV first by 35 milliseconds. We did sync AV on to give it dynamic AV delays. Everything we can do to try to optimize the cure restoration and get it as narrow as possible. If he doesn't respond to this, we have other options. This isn't the only thing. So I think we're good with this and we're good to go. Thank you very much. My name is AJ Hale and I appreciate you joining me.